Supernovas are the bright explosion following the death of a star, marking the end of their life cycle. They have implications for further study and research, helping us expand our scientific understanding. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three astronomical discoveries centered around supernovas. Vy Canis Majoris is dying. Just like snowflakes, each star in the universe is entirely unique. Well, not quite, but there are a whole host of different types of stars as they go through different phases of their life cycles and reach different classifications. One star type, the red hypergiant, has become of increasing interest over the years. Red hypergiants are a very rare type of star, made distinct through its high luminosity, high mass, and large size. Equally, the harsh, stellar winds result in a great deal of mass loss. So, besides the rarity, why have astronomers seemingly taken an interest in this specific star type as of late? Red hypergiants are thought to be a crucial component in developing our understanding of how stars develop and evolve throughout their lifetime. There are plenty of aspects to stellar evolution. Though it is hoped that the red hypergiants will provide more specific insight into the formation of stars, the stability of stars, and, perhaps most dramatically, how their time ends presumably as supernovae. Now, astronomers at the University of Arizona have developed a model of Vy Canis Majoris, a red hypergiant that could plausibly be the largest star in our galaxy, the Milky Way. The team is now using this model to make predictions about how this star will end. As we mentioned before, the life cycle of red hypergiants is gaining a spot increasingly in the public light, as astronomers have decided to zero in on the end of their life cycle making claims and predictions about how the lives of these stars come to their ending. Many experts believe that much like many other types of stars, these red hypergiants will come to the end of their lives through an explosion, turning into a supernova. However, there has been some more recent data that has emerged, or rather a lack thereof, that shed a light on this hypothesis. Research suggests that if red hypergiants do indeed explode in this manner, then there are simply not enough supernovae that we have seen to account for this. So, what other theories have been presented? The current working theory is that these stars could be more likely to collapse into black holes. It would therefore make sense that we haven't been able to find evidence of these red hypergiants in their afterlives since black holes are much more difficult to observe directly than supernovae are. While we don't know much about what the traits and characteristics allow the stars to evolve into black holes are, we have completed the first step in figuring this out, namely, developing a model. The team based at the University of Arizona have selected Vy Nice Majoris as a representative of red hypergiants in their research. The star is huge, as it reaches a staggering 10,000 to 15,000 AU in size. AU is a unit of measurement that refers to the average distance between the Earth and the Sun, making 1 AU approximately 149,597,870.7 kilometers. Furthermore, it's a relatively close 3,009 light-years away from the Earth. Between the close proximity to us here on Earth and the sheer size of this star, it's a great selection to gather observational data from as astronomers are able to see right up to the surface of the star. One aspect that is crucial in the process of a star at the end of its life is mass loss. This is usually the result of gas and dust being blown out of the photosphere of the star. Once again, it's important to note that a significant amount of mass loss is a key trait in these red hypergiants. The team collected data using ALMA and they gathered radio signals of the material that was sent into space through this mass loss. This material has included sulfur dioxide, silicon dioxide, and sodium chloride. These radio signals mean that information on the movement itself can be detected and gathered too, not just the static presence of the various materials. With this large amount of data, the research is still in progress and is not considered complete. The team presented their findings to the American Astronomical Society in the middle of June 2022, explaining what they have so far to inform their model. Though they hope as their data increases in size, they will have greater, more significant findings to share. Each star is slowly fading, 
and it's hoped that with this model, we will be able to predict what the fates of red hypergiants are. It won't be until the future end of VY Canis Majoris that we will be able to eventually confirm if we are even close to figuring it all out at all. White Dwarf Survives Its Own Supernova Explosion Whilst a supernova typically marks the end of a star's lifetime, a recent finding suggests that this might not exactly be the case, as a white dwarf star seems to have been observed to survive its own supernova. A white dwarf is the last point in a star's life cycle before it becomes a supernova. Of course, not all stars are alike, but white dwarfs occur for stars that are like our sun, after the red giant stage. Despite them being only as big as the Earth, white dwarfs have a mass similar to our Sun, making them incredibly dense. This density is paired with a strong gravity, pulling material in close orbits in, eventually resulting in the thermonuclear destruction of the star, namely the supernova. However, back in 2012, astronomers observed the supernova of 2012Z, about 120 million light-years away from Earth, via the Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble data revealed something unusual, however. The progenitor star, namely the star that birthed the supernova, not only seemed to survive, but had grown brighter since the supernova, which was dubbed a Type IA supernova. Curtis McCulley, an astrophysicist at the Las Cumbres Observatory, said in a statement, nobody was expecting to see a surviving star that was brighter. The stars left behind by these type IA supernovas that have seemingly failed have been nicknamed zombie stars. A theory that is still somewhat in development is that the thermonuclear explosion was not powerful enough to completely destroy the white dwarf star with a great deal of the debris simply landing back upon what remained. There are countless things we do not understand in space, and whilst it is frustrating to feel as though we must undo our knowledge, sometimes taking a few steps back will let us entirely open up our understanding. In our galaxy's interstellar gas, voids are being created by dying stars. The world we live in is marked with history. From monuments to centuries of waste, it's impossible to deny the presence of humans, animals and plants alike on planet Earth. Similarly, up in outer space, we can see a long marking of what was once there as voids are seemingly being left following the explosions of massive stars. The gas that flows between the stars within the Milky Way galaxy has some further information hidden within it. It appears there are imprints of bubbles from within space, a leftover trace of a star supernova explosion when it reaches the end of its life cycle. Scientists seem to think that this is the history of a star etched into the night sky. We often think of space as just that, empty space. However, in between stars, there is more than the nothingness we might think of. Between these celestial bodies, you would find plenty of gas moving through the galaxy. In some points, every now and again, the gas moves in such a way that it forms a cloud, composed largely of atomic hydrogen. As far as we know regarding star formation, there are stars that are able to form within these clouds and, as is the circle of life, once they fade, they help to form the future gas clouds. Despite this knowledge, we are yet to understand precisely how the gas manages to move around the galaxy. A team of astronomers led by the lead researcher, Juan Diego Sola of the Italian National Institute for Astrophysics, based in Italy, began to research this phenomenon, starting by looking into the structures of the atomic hydrogen. The data collected was gathered by the HI4PI project an all-sky survey that used radio wavelengths to study the sky, resulting in a map of the neutral atomic hydrogen spread throughout our galaxy. This is by far the most advanced map of this kind, mapping not only the placement of these gases throughout the Milky Way, but also the velocity. It's thought that by joining this research up with a model of the Milky Way's rotation, the team of astronomers will have success in their attempt to figure out the distances to the structures within the gas, this data allows for algorithms to look for complex and intricate patterns in the structures, completing an otherwise impossible analysis far too sensitive for people to complete by eye. So far, the team appear to think 
that the gas is a result of supernovae explosions, sweeping gas into denser formations and leaving bubbles that eventually pop, eventually leaving an imprint behind. There is much more research that is needed in order to uncover more about these so-called voids, though this research team has certainly made impressive strides. The scientific world is constantly developing, from puzzles we are still unraveling from a decade ago to having to correct what we thought we knew. What will we discover next?